Right, so we're focusing on second derivatives of implicit functions. What I'm going to do here, I've got a few examples for you to have a crack at. I'm going to show you the examples. I want you to pause the video, read them, have a crack at them, and then come back and check your answers against the ones I'm going to present here. Here you go. So I want you to find the second derivative of each of these three functions, a, b, and c, and write your final answers, d2y by dx squared, equals in that format. Now remember, you have to make sure to eliminate the dy by dx by substituting in in the final steps. Pause it and have a go. So the first one, 3x squared minus 4y squared equals 12. So all I need to do, start on the left, work my way to the right, taking the derivative with respect to x of every single term, and then see where I go from there. Now the thing we always have to bear in mind, as we've said throughout the other videos, is that y is a function of x but we don't know specifically what that function of is, so we essentially have to treat it as y of x. So when we're doing the derivative at this stage, that has to come into account. So working left to right, we get 6x, take away 8y times the dy by dx, equals derivative of 12, which is just 0. Then rearrange it so I get dy by dx on a side all on its own. What I'd end up getting is 8y times dy by dx, equals 6x. If I then divide through by 8y onto both sides, I get dy by dx equals 3x over 4y. Now I'm going to keep it in this format here, because if you look at that, if I'm going to take the derivative of that yet again, I'm going to end up using the quotient rule. So at least then I know what the u and the v are, and I can substitute them in pretty quickly and easily when I do it. So my second derivative, d2y by dx squared, I want to use the quotient rule, so it's derivative of the top times the bottom, take away derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. So in this case, I'm going to end up with 3 times 4y, take away 3x times 4 dy by dx. And that's then all going to be over the 4x, sorry, the 4y squared, which gives me 16y squared as my denominator. Now, if I look at the top, I know dy by dx is equal to 3x over 4y. So what I'm going to do is substitute it into here and see how that simplifies. So if I now focus on just the numerator, what I end up getting is I'll get 12y for my first term, take away 3x times 4 times 3x over 4y. Now for this, what that then means, the 4s here cancel out. And then I'll end up with 12y take away 3x times 3x, so 9x squared over y. What I'm going to do is combine these together over a common denominator. And what I'll end up getting is I get 12y squared take away 9x squared all over y. Now that I've got that, that's what my numerator is. So I can say fine, so my derivative d2y by dx squared second derivative is equal to the 12y squared take away 9x squared over y it's then divided by 16y squared. Well what I can do is I can simplify all that so dividing by 16y squared is the same as multiplying by 1 over 16y squared so in that case that simplifies down to be 12y squared take away 9x squared all over 16y cubed. So there you go, that's my second derivative d2y by dx squared of this function here. Second function was x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 1. Same set of steps. We're just bringing in other rules, so for this one here we'll need the product rule. So we end up getting 2x plus 2y plus 2x dy by dx plus 2y dy by dx equals 0. Keep everything with dy by dx on the left, stick everything without it on the right, and then see what I can get from there. So if I do that and I factorise this side, <coughs> I get dy by dx, bracket 2x plus 2y, equals negative 2x minus 2y. What I can then do is divide through by that and have dy by dx equals negative 2, I'm going to take that out as a common factor, 
bracket x plus y over, well I'm going to take 2 out of this one as a common factor, 2 bracket x plus y. Well if we look at that, that's actually quite nice because this all simplifies. 2's here go, the x plus y's go. <laughs> Nicely, I'm left with a derivative dy by dx of just negative 1. Second derivative of that one, d2y by dx squared, is just 0. Occasionally we do get ones that end up working out nicely like this, but what they do is they can be applied to situations involving velocities and accelerations. So for example, if this was about a velocity, it would have a constant velocity throughout. So we have to be able to apply it and work in certain scenarios as to how we're going. Final question was x squared plus y squared. Take away 2x cos x equals 1. Again, same set of steps. Left to right, working it through. So I get 2x plus 2y dy by dx. Take away 2 cos x. I then end up with plus 2x sine x. Remember, cos goes to minus sine. And that equals 0. So what I now do... Everything without a dy by dx across. Keep the dy by dx and see what I can do from there. So I'm going to end up with 2y times dy by dx here. Equals, well what I'm going to do is as I move everything across, I'm actually going to take out 2 as a common factor as well. So I'll end up with 2 bracket cos x minus x sine x minus x on the right hand side. And if I then divide through by the 2y, I get dy by dx equals that there, so the cos x minus x sine x minus x all over y. Because I've just cancelled out the 2, here's the common factor and the 2 there. Now, I do my second derivative again, a fraction here, so it's going to be the quotient rule. So from that, d2y by dx squared, I'll do the derivative of the top first. So I end up getting negative sine x minus sine x minus x cos x minus 1. That's all going to be multiplied by y. I'm then going to take away this bit at the top again. So the cos x minus x sine x minus x times the derivative at the bottom times dy by dx. That's then all going to be over the bottom squared. So that's going to be all over y squared. Now that there looks like a fun expression and a fun equation to be working with. We have to remember at this stage to substitute in for dy by dx and then simplify the top as much as we possibly can. So we need a bit more space to do that. So let's take it on to the next slide. What I'm going to do just focus on the numerator to begin with. I'm going to multiply out this bracket after substituting n for the dy by dx. Now remember, we know the format of dy by dx from the previous slide. That was given by dy by dx equals cos x minus x sine x minus x all over y. So we substitute that into here and then see what we can do. Well, if we were to do that, you'll actually notice that this bracket here is the same as the top bracket there. So this whole term here would quite simply become this with a squared on top. So this part of my numerator would be given by cos x minus x sine x minus x all squared all over y. We then have to look at this side here. Well, there's not really much more I can do to this side in order to simplify it. But what I am going to do is combine it with this side here using a common denominator. So I want to over y. So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by y here. And I'm then going to end up with negative sine x minus sine x minus x cos x minus 1 times y squared, that's then going to be taking away this as well, and now the whole thing's going to be over y. So from this, this is where the fun really begins. We've got to simplify, multiply everything out, 
and take it from there so we can get it in its simplest form. However, if you were to multiply all this out and try and gather all the terms, that top line would become incomprehensible. It would just be far too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this bracket so it would become minus 2 sine x minus x cos x minus 1. I'm going to keep it in the bracket with the y squared outside. I'm going to keep this bracket with the squares. It's all going to be over y, but that's then going to be divided by y squared. So I can then write it as one term. I would say simply, but it's not the nicest of terms. It's going to be negative 2 sine x minus x cos x minus 1. All that multiplied by y squared. So I'm going to take away cos x minus x sine x minus x all squared divided by a new denominator which will be given by y cubed. So, a fun one to finish on there. They can go from different levels of complexity from the previous one, which ended up being really, really quite nice and straightforward, to ones that look like this monstrosity here and beyond. Now, a key thing to remember is if we end up with values that we want to substitute in, so if it wants the acceleration at a set point, this is where we would substitute it in. Always do yourself a favour though and make it as easy as possible. <clears throat> if it actually becomes easier to substitute in here, before you simplify, as long as you know your expression for dy by dx and what dy by dx is at that value as well, you should actually be able to manage it, no problem. So bear in mind how we want to use these. They've got a lot of applications in maths and beyond, in physics, chemistry, biology, for example. We need to take them seriously and we need to know how to do these sorts of functions.